Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. Thank you to my subscribers for your support, for your comments. Uh, yeah, love you for that. And um, for new, anybody just passing through, um, if you like what I talk about, please subscribe and share and do whatever is necessary. But yeah, today's topic is a difficult one. Difficult because it's technical. It really requires um, immigration specialists to see whether or not any of you can um, jump on the bandwagon with this one, putting it bluntly. Um, there, was a, there was a time when somebody who was just born to a British mother had to be married to the British father in order to become a citizen. Otherwise, the father would have had to register the child. Um, there's a new remedial order that's come out that's um, saying that that is discriminatory. You're discriminating against a child just because it's illegitimate. So now they're looking into that. And the reason they're looking into it is because a guy called Johnson um, was born of a British father in Jamaica. Let me just read it so it makes it easier. Um, okay, so Johnson, who's called the appellant was born in 18th of March 1985 in Jamaica. His mother was a Jamaican and his father was British. His paternity was not in doubt, so that means the father had no problem acknowledging that he was his father. His parents were not married to one another. Under the law then, in force, the appellant became a citizen of Jamaica, but not a British citizen. His father brought him to the United Kingdom in 1989 when he was aged four and he has lived in the UK ever since. He or his father might have made an application for him to be registered as a British citizen while he was still a child and it would have been the policy of the UK to grant such an application provided that if the child was 16 or over, he was of good character. But no such application was made. He was, however, granted indefinite leave to remain until 1992, just before his seventh birthday. So, neither the appellant since applied to be registered as a British citizen, it is accepted that such an application would not succeed because the appellant cannot demonstrate that he is of good character. He was in he had he has a very serious criminal record and has been convicted of an offence from two thousand and three, the year in which he reached the age of 18 until, nine, to, until 2008, when he was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to nine years imprisonment. Now, what they're saying is, had things been different, depending on whether or not he had been born in the UK, or had his father registered him when he was supposed to, he would have been a British citizen. So they're trying to say that because of those circumstances, he is being discriminated against and not being allowed British citizenship to no fault of his own. The only thing I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about is that he had to commit uh, such a serious crime for it to be um, a precedent. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there of good character who either weren't married, because this is, a, this is for people who were not married and were denied citizenship, whose who weren't married when they had the child, and who were denied citizenship, or the father had to fork out a £1,000 for citizenship. So this is a new remedial order. order. It's, it's a coming out around, it's supposed to be around July, August. It's... You know, it's a, I saw something, the last entry I saw was June, which was just last month. And they were saying that they were still working on it to get rid of all the discrimination. But let me read a little bit more from this. i just give you the definitions. Um, 
At All Material Time, Section 21A of the British Nationality Act 1981 provided and still provides a person born outside the United Kingdom shall be a British citizen if at the time of the birth his father or mother a is a British citizen otherwise than by descent. So I didn't know that. A person born... So the person... So you can have a child born outside of the UK, but if the parents are British citizens, otherwise then by descent, which means I'm assuming they're indigenous British citizens, that their child can still become a British citizen. Now that reminds me of... Um, what I said about that boy. Now, he was actually born in the UK, but his parents weren't British citizens, I believe. So that's, yeah. So, however, until amended by the Nationality Act and Asylum Act 2002, section 50 in brackets 9 of the 1981 Act, provided the following definition of a person's mother and father. For the purposes of this Act, the relationship of mother and child shall be taken to exist between a woman and any child, legitimate or illegitimate, born to her, but b. the relationship of the father and child shall be taken to exist only between a man and any legitimate child born to him, and the expression mother, hither parent, child and descendant shall be construed accordingly. So that's basically um, just um, just defining what a mother and father is really. And like I said, they're saying that if the child is illegitimate, if the man marries a ch marries the woman of the illegit of the of the illegitimate child, that child will be legitimate and will become a citizen. And nevertheless, Section 47 of the 1981 Act, until its repeal by Section 9 in brackets 4 of the 2002 Act, provided that a person born out of wedlock but legitimated by a subsequent marriage of his parents, if the parent operated to legitimate him by the law of the place where his the father was domiciled. My goodness. <coughs> when the marriage took place was to be treated as on that date of marriage as if he had been born legitimate. In simple terms, if a child is born out of wedlock, he can be legitimated by marriage. And the, by marriage, operated in the, if their marriage operated to legitimate him by the law of the place where the father was domiciled, which in other words is England in the UK. I don't know why this language is so convoluted when their marriage took place. Must be treated. So basically, what they're saying is, is that if you've got an illegitimate child and you marry the British father, because the father is a patriarchal society, so it's the father who legitimises the child, that's if the mother is not foreign, of course. If the mother's British, there's no problem. But if the, if the mother is not British, but the father is British, then if the father marries the non-British uh, mother, then that child will become legitimate from the date of the marriage and he will also be entitled to British citizenship from the date of the marriage. And in those circumstances, he won't have to pay that big £1,000. But if they're, not, if they're not married, then the father will have to register the child separately and then he um, would have to pay that that registration fee. So what they're saying now though, even that is even though that is in place, the law should not discriminate against a child just because he was illegitimate if whatever the circumstances were, if he was legitimate, he would he would be treated exactly the same.
But what's been happening is because a child is illegitimate, he's been denied citizenship and it's not his fault. So there's going to be something done about that. And it's called a remedial order 2019. So look out for it. I'll be looking out for it as well. Anyway, let me just read a little bit of this. Because this all came about because of Johnson. Um, British nationality law previously only granted automatic British nationality by descent to children born in wedlock to British fathers. So to people, children born of marriage. This draft remedial order concerns the right of a, of a child of a British parent to become a British citizen by descent from their British parent, irrespective of whether it is their mother or their father who is British, and irrespective of whether their parents are married or not. So this is what that new remedial order will do. It won't matter whether or not the mother is British like it, like it does now, or the father is British, or whether they're married or not married. That won't affect the citizenship once this remedial order comes into play, which is good news because it was discriminatory. It was a discriminatory against gender because what they're saying is it's only the father who can qualify to register the child or to say that that child is British. Um, Previous efforts have been made to address the historic discrimination in British nationality law. Section 4C of the British Nationality Act 1981 was introduced to address discrimination against people whose mothers rather than their fathers were British citizens. And Section 4F Dash 41 of the British Nationality Act were introduced to address discrimination against people whose parents were not married. However, some anom anomalies in treatment remain, remain meaning that the discrimination persists. So they haven't been able to take it out of every area, but they are working on it at the moment. The most significant is the requirement for these children to prove good character a requirement that did not apply to those acquiring British nationality by descent as a legitimate child of a British father. So what they're saying is, is that, you know, if you were getting your British citizenship through your mother, then the good character criteria applies. So if you've got any criminal convictions or anything like that, you're not going to get your British citizenship. And what they're saying is, is that that rule doesn't apply if you're getting your British citizenship through your father. And they're saying that's discriminatory because it should apply to both, whether you're doing it through your mother or your father. So that's being looked into. Um, and that's because this Johnson guy he actually won the appeal, which is why it's being changed, because what they were saying is that they would not allow him British citizenship because he had committed an offence, a serious offence. And what they're saying is that if he had a British and they were going to deport him. And what he argued was, is that if he was a British citizenship, British citizen and his father's registered him as a British citizen, he wouldn't have had that outcome. They couldn't have deported him. I mean, I tell you something, the British legal system, it's all on semantics. The slightest little thing. That's why you should never give up sometimes, especially when it comes to law. I really wish I'd been a lawyer at one point, because when it comes to law, if you can show inconsistencies and match it up like this, what you think is impossible is actually possible. Who would have thought a man from Jamaica who wasn't a citizen, who'd committed manslaughter, who was in jail for nine years, got his deportation stayed, lifted? I'm not saying it's the right thing to do or it's great or good news or whatever. But what I'm saying is because the law was not written in a way that um, um, in, a, in, a, in a fair way then, because that should apply. But it can't apply to people who are citizenship, citizens because where do they deport them to? 
So, yeah, it's it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because I was saying that they could, they should really, they can't have one rule for one and one rule for another. But technically they can if that person is not of this country. But according to this, what they're saying is, is if he had been, because his father was a British citizen, and technically he should have been a British citizen if the papers had gone through and the application had gone through. And it's because the papers hadn't gone through and he hadn't been registered as a British citizen and he had reached the age of 18, why he found himself in this situation. But he won that case on that based on that merit. So, um, what else? Um, I think I'm going to repeat myself, but oh god, it goes on the other side. Okay. The court subsequently made a declaration of incompatibility in relation to these provisions in the cases of Johnson and Bangs. Bangs was another one who got his deportation lifted for a similar um, situation. And finding that the application of the good character requirement to children whose mother was British or whose parents were unmarried was discriminatory and contrary to their human rights under the Human Rights Act 1998 and the European Convention on Human Rights 1950. The, the Supreme Court had decided that the historic failure of the British nationality law to confer automatic citizenship on a child born out of wedlock was discriminatory. It has continuing consequences which breached a person's human rights in a discriminatory way. I mean, when you think about it, it is really, because if a child is born of a British parent, whether, the, whether it's the mother or father, and is born in the UK, they should be citizens. It's different if the parents are not from the UK. But provided one of them is from the UK, that child should be a British citizen. They shouldn't have to be paying all this money to register and all that stuff. So in that sense, I'm glad that's being changed. That's going to cause a lot of fraud because I'm wondering if it's going to be retroactive. What about all those people who they've denied um, citizenship because they um, weren't married? What happens to them? It's going to, I mean, this, you know, they should really get things like this sorted. I think, you know, what happens is, is that we've got so many brains in the system now. And we've got, now you've got Google and things can be tracked back. It's much more easier to find precedence and information about these things. And so, you know, what's been brushed underneath the carpet for so long is suddenly somebody's gone and said, oh, hang on a minute. You know, if that person, if that person's parents were married, this guy couldn't be deported. Is that fair? That's what's happened. Um, let me see. I don't want to read all of this stuff because it's too long. I am going to put a link. Um, yeah, I've said that. Had his mother and father been married, he would have been born British. Mr Johnson could have applied to be registered as a British under the provisions intended to address the historic discrimination contained in the British Nationality Act 1981. But once he turned 16, only if he could demonstrate that he was of good character, and of course he couldn't. Mr Johnson was granted indefinite leave to remain in the UK 1992 while changes in nationality law in 2006 entitled illegitimate children to British citizenship. This did not operate retrospect retrospectively. So it is. OK. So it looks like in 2006, illegitimate children can have British citizenship. It's another thing I didn't know. I told you, I don't know. I don't know everything. Um, but yeah, entitled illegitimate children to have British citizenship. So what is this saying then? So it's only the good character aspect of it 
that they want to take out because okay if you're illegit if you're if you have an illegitimate child and you're entitled to um British citizenship, what they're saying then is the good character aspect of it is what is discriminatory because it's not in it's not allowed for those people who are citizens. Am I talking well goggly goop? I hope not. Yeah, so okay, I'm trying to understand this myself as I'm going along, as you probably can imagine. It's not easy, it's it's all technical stuff. But, you know, I think I want to, like I said, I like to kind of throw, throw stuff out there just to give you food for thought. So even if what I'm saying is not 100% accurate, you could think, hey, hang on a minute. That might apply to me. That might apply to so and so. Let me go and check that out. And that's what I like you to do. Don't rely on what I say, especially when it comes to immigration and stuff. Get expert advice. So, um, what else is there? Um, between 2003 and 2008, Mr. Johnson was convicted of a serious criminal offence, culminating in a conviction for manslaughter, which I already said. Um, the Home, the Home Secretary initiated deportation action in response. Mr. Johnson argued that he was not a British citizen and therefore immune to deportation action only because of historic discrimination on the basis of his birth out of wedlock. Agreeing with the claimant, the Supreme Court ruled that what had to be justified was the current discriminatory effect of the law, that very weighty reason would be required to justify discrimination on the basis of birth out of wedlock and no sufficient hmm, justification had been advanced by the Home Secretary. Accordingly, a declaration of incompatibility was made and Mr. Johnson's deportation was halted. So I'm not going to read about bangs, otherwise we'll be here all night. Um, the impact, okay, the impact of the remedial order will be to prevent applicants for citizenship in a similar position to Johnson and Bangs being refused on the basis of a criminal conviction. The change will recognise that an applicant who is not British only because of laws that at the time of their birth were framed in a discriminatory manner ought to be able to be placed in the same position he or she would have been had the discrimination not occurred. So that's kind of what I was trying to say. I hope that makes sense now. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to try it. I'm not even, I've already explained that, so I'm not going to go for it again. Um, the government has recently passed a remedial order, so I think it's already out there, but I couldn't find it. I don't know what they're calling it. It didn't come up as a remedial order, so it's obviously got another name, but I really wanted to see if it had come out. But anyway, but it is, uh, it's planned to eliminate incompatibility and discrimination. However, discrimination still persists on the grounds of a parent's gender or marital status in some areas of citizenship law. British nationality is governed by the British Nationality Act 1981, which came into force in 1983. Until the year 2000, passing on British citizenship to children was more difficult for unmarried couples or women. Section 4 of the Act was subsequently heavily amended in order to address this issue, and sections 4C, 4F, 4G, 4H and 4I were added. However, citizenship is not automatically granted under these amendments. So even though it's been amended, it's not automatically granted. So this is probably where they have to register and pay all that money. It wouldn't surprise me. Those applying for registration must still satisfy the Home Office's good character requirement. On the individuals who would, but for their parents' marital status, have automatically acquired citizenship at birth. Hmm. 
The amendment would allow the child of a British parent to become a British citizen by descent from their British parent, irrespective of whether it is their mother or father who is British. And irrespective of whether the parents are married or not. I think I said that is it already. The report states it cannot be right in principle that entitlement to British nationality still varies according to whether it is one's mother or one's father who is British or whether one's parents are married or not. Entitlements to British nationality vary depending on when and where one was born and one's links to the UK. <sighs> wow. This is really kind of heavy stuff. I don't like reading this, but all of this. But I do think it is important for you to get a, a taste of what's going on. Um, OK, I'm nearly finished now. The Joint Committee of Human Rights found that other in discriminatory provisions appear to remain on the face of the British nationality legislation and it recommends that these should also be addressed. The committee also raised concerns over the sheer complexity of British nationality law and found the relevant acts have been amended so many times that it is not easy to understand what law is current and what is not. The multi-page report stated in part that this is because the multiple acts cross refer to each other, making it often difficult to read without access to specialist resources. In part, it is because certain provisions have to be read in light of particular case law, often giving interpretations that might not be apparent to those seeking to apply for nationality. This means that it would be near impossible for an individual without legal advice to navigate this area of law and to understand their rights. Given the reduction in legal aid over recent years, there is a real risk that individuals will simply be denied meaningful access to their rights and access to justice because the law is inaccessible to non-specialists. The Joint Committee on Human Rights recommends that the Home Secretary address the inaccessibility of British nationality law, including by introducing a consolidating piece of legislation to help individuals seeking to use and apply the statute. I know, I'm telling you, man, it is absolutely ridiculous to try and make head or tail of this stuff. But I guess all we can know from this in simple terms, is that there, you, that you, there used to be a time when the mother could not, the child could not be registered a citizen if it was the mother was British, it had to be the father. They've now since changed that, and they're also changing the fact that um, the parents are don't have to be married. So that's basically what they're saying. And the good character element is still going to come in because they're going to have to say, you know, if you're not of good character, they don't want you in the country. So they're trying to make that compatible with the EU law, but I'm not quite sure what they're doing that. I just think it's just, you know what? I've downloaded that um, document, 340 pages. Who's going to read that? I mean, I love doing these videos, but really and truly, I maybe that's why I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for you. That's all for now. And I hope you still find it helpful, even though it's a bit gobbledygook. I hope you can make some sense out of nonsense. Bye bye.